And so also over time, what typically starts to happen is <clears throat> the blood vessels nourishing everything, they start to become a little weak and damaged, which is the main connection between erectile dysfunction and heart disease, is that those same blood vessels that are becoming diseased as they course through the body are becoming diseased as they supply your erection and they're becoming diseased as they start to, as they're supplying the heart. So I want you to think about it like this. Think about a long water hose tube, right? And if you think about it, you know, with those tubes, we can put a kink in it and all of a sudden the pressure in the tube is, is going to be more. And if we kink it too much, it stops, right? So just imagine speeding up the pressure through the tube of, of, the, of the garden hose and also think about it like this. If that garden hose was old, like this just happened to me the other day. It's, it's old. I've had it for about two years. Now the pressure has increased in it and the rubber surrounding the, the hose has gotten, you know, it's gotten hot, it's gotten cold, it's, you know, it's gotten weak. And so what, what ends up happening? That blood vest, that, that, that uh, tube actually busts open or it starts to leak. It starts with a little slow leak, right? So if you imagine those are your blood vessels, that slow leak that can happen with the tube that we're supplying our garden vegetables with, actually a similar situation can happen in our blood vessels so that now, okay, maybe that blood isn't leaking out into our body. It's not a complete rupture. But what it's actually doing is forcing uh, some of the bad stuff that's coursing through our blood to actually now is getting in the walls of the tissue, right? Because imagine that this is a two-ply tube. This is a two-ply water hose. And now all of a sudden, you've got stuff collecting between the outer part of the water hose and the inner part of the water hose, right? So as you can imagine over time, this can really get out of hand. And that's ultimately how heart disease and cardiovascular disease actually starts to happen, is that as hypertension sets in or an inflammation sets in in those blood vessels, they actually start to change and they start to stiffen and they start to get plaques in it. And they're not plaques, they're not clogged arteries like you got some too much hair in the, in the sink and it's clogging up the sink, it's actually becoming clogged or a plaque is developing because within that wall, that two layer vessel, like, a, like your two layers of garden hose material, stuff is actually starting to collect between the two layers. And so eventually what may happen is that those plaques can actually rupture. And that's what causes a problem. And that is why I spend so much time talking about blood flow. Is Yes, I want your dick to work. But more than anything, I want you alive to tell me the stories about how the dick's working. Right. So we have to really think about how all of this is connected. And so sometimes you can have a very healthy person who seems to be doing everything right, but maybe doing something that's fueling the inflammation in their body or is exposed to something that's fueling inflammation and they could be eating all of the, what, the right things but still have diseased vessels, still have cardiovascular disease. We're hearing a lot about celebrities now who the cause of death is being labeled as cardiovascular disease and their agents are coming forward and saying, listen, this was the healthiest man I know. I knew, how could he have cardiovascular disease? Well. That's because traditionally we've only thought of cardiovascular disease as like the overweight guy who's eating donuts. And that's not really what it is. It's actually somebody who, for whatever reason, whether it's because they're exposed to uh, something at work, whether it's because they're stressed out, whether it's because they put something into their body that shouldn't be there, whatever have you, for, or maybe even eating some form of health food that they thought was healthy, but is actually causing inflammation. And now that inflammation is getting in the blood vessel and causing the blood vessel to be diseased. And that same diseased blood vessel is supposed to be supplying the erection and it's supposed to be supplying the heart and the whole body. And so which shows up first usually? Is it the heart attack and the heart disease that shows up first or is it 
the erectile dysfunction that shows up first. It's the erectile dysfunction that shows up first. So it would be irresponsible for me or any doctor to just throw Viagra at you without trying to heal the underlying vascular damage or the blood flow issue, which is what the smoothie recipes target. They try to help lower inflammation. They try to help boost nitric oxide levels. They try to help you heal from within so that while you're healing from within, then as simultaneously, you're working on pumping. You are bringing the tissue back to life, which has kind of gone to sleep because it hasn't been getting blood flow. It hasn't been getting bloop, bloop, bloop at night while you're sleeping, right? So it all really, really works together. And so doctors have to, when they have patients that come in, and you may be one of them that's saying that you have erectile issues, we've got to say, is this cardiovascular disease? Is this prostate disease? What is going on here? And ruling out cardiovascular disease is important. But then the next piece isn't necessarily just throwing a bunch of medication at you. The next piece is giving you the lifestyle changes that you need to help heal the blood vessels. Because listen, a diseased blood vessel today doesn't mean that three months from now, six months from now, those same blood vessels have to be diseased. We can heal blood vessels. And how do you heal them? Honestly, you heal them with changing the nutrients that your body is getting. You fill in the gaps. Like if you're missing certain nutrients, we want to give those nutrients back to you. If you are getting too many toxins in your body, we want to remove those toxins, right? And so I see it all the time. You know, you might invest in a certain diet program. You might go all keto or you might go all vegan or, but you don't know if all of that stuff that is seems right for the people on Instagram is right for you. So you kind of have to do your own due diligence. And one of the first things that we do, especially for someone who's feeling terrible, just sick, just everything is going wrong. You have to remove all of the foods that we associate with inflammation from it. You know, we got to remove the dairy. We have to remove the soy. We even remove eggs. You know, we remove nuts. We remove anything that could be that we traditionally associate with inflammation. And to the point where you're just basically eating lean cuts of meat and certain vegetables that don't traditionally cause inflammation. And I say traditionally because broccoli may be great for me, but broccoli may be fueling inflammation in you, right? So We remove all of those things that traditionally cause inflammation. We do remove most of the time broccoli too. And then after about two weeks or three weeks, four weeks even, we start to gradually add them back in to see which ones could be triggering some problems here, right? So we call that an elimination diet. And even with the expensive lab tests that we can order to see which foods may be triggering you, to see if the fish oil that you're taking is bad, Mexican food that you love so much, if something in there is terrible, you know, like we can run tests to see which food sensitivities that you have, you know, and, and you'll get a printout and you could see all of that. But the best version of it is really you doing the hard work, removing a bunch of stuff from your diet, and then gradually adding them in one at a time to see which ones could be actually triggering inflammation. So that's what we do when we assume that food has got your gut messed up and is fueling the inflammation, which is fueling the blood vessel disease, right? So you got to remove the offending agent. You got to figure out, are you too stressed out? How do we minimize stress? Is it something you're exposed to at work? Is it some type of toxin that you're exposed to? Is it the fact that you work the night shift and are not getting enough hours of sleep? Which by the way, studies show that people who work the night shift just don't live as long as the rest of us. You know, so figuring out what could be fueling part of that process removing that, and then simultaneously healing the blood vessels as they are. And so healing the blood vessels is restoring nitric oxide production, increasing the antioxidants. So when we talk about antioxidants, like blueberries are rich in antioxidants, right? So what does that really mean? Well, what it means is that that antioxidant is kind of like a, um, so think of, think of, um, Free radicals and reactive oxygen species, think of them as space space, space invaders, you know, right? 
right? So you're playing, no, and, and you're playing a game of, of space invaders, right? And these things keep popping up, right? Think of antioxidants as like your ammunition to knock them out the sky. And so if you don't have enough antioxidants on board that you are replenishing on a daily basis, then those radical, those free radicals and those reactive oxygen species that we're all in, 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 in exposed to in our food, in our water, everything, through stress, all that thing, there's nothing to combat them. So that is ultimately why I stress antioxidants. That's why the, the smoothie recipes are packed with antioxidants is because we want to destroy those things that our, uh, that our body is designed to fight. So our body is designed to get rid of all of that. But if you don't have the ammunition to take it out, then it just creates chaos and confusion for your body. So you want to load the body in with the nutrients, the macronutrients and the vitamins that it needs to fight off all that stuff so that you can heal the blood vessels so that you can start back making nitric oxide. So those blood vessels can actually expand and contract the way they should. Because when you have cardiovascular disease and the ED that comes with it, those blood vessels get stiff, they get hard, they can't expand. And unfortunately for a lot of people, what ultimately ends up happening is those stiff arteries, just like the hose that I had out there that ruptured on me um, when I was trying to do some gardening, that stiffness, since it can't expand, actually can rupture and cause a stroke or a heart attack. And so that's why it's so important when you are in a space where you have hypertension, you have diabetes, or you have pre-hypertension, or you have pre-diabetes, um, or you don't, and you have ED, and you got to make sure that you are taking care of the blood vessels. That's why I don't go straight to telling you to take Viagra. I don't go straight to telling you to get a pump. I go straight to the smoothie recipes because that's what I've always done with my guys is focus on healing the inside, the delivery mechanism, and then focus on the mechanism, right? So then we can start back maybe having the nighttime erections where we're getting a bloop, bloop, bloop. You might make wake up with some morning wood. I have guys who haven't pumped but have only done the smoothies, and they'll be like, Doc, the morning wood is coming back. Yes, because your body has the nutrients it needs to help heal those blood vessels, to give it the nitric oxide that it needs to help expand. So that's why I talk a lot about nitric oxide. So because I feel like, listen, not everybody's going to take a smoothie. Nobody, some, some people aren't going to want to make it. Some of you don't have the ingredients available. Some of you just don't have the time. If you want a supplement to help with the nitric oxide, well, I'm, I recommend a good supplement to help with the nitric oxide. But on top of the nitric oxide production is we also still need to get the antioxidants up. We've got to bring in the phytonutrients. We got to get more magnesium in the body. We've got to get you know, more nitrates in the body. We got to do all of that stuff on top of it, and the pumping helps rehabilitate the actual tissue. So the smoothies, the the nitric oxide boosting is for the blood vessels. The pumping is for the smoothie. For is for well, yeah, you could think of it as the smoothie at the end of the rainbow, right? But you know, the pumping is to actually regenerate the tissue. If you're using Shockwave, it's to help regenerate the tissue. I got my my uh, thing upside down here. Uh, I always want to keep it up because it helps keep us all motivated, right? But um, so so the tissue and the internal mechanism are similar, but they're actually combating things from two different perspectives. So when you write me, you tell me, "Well, Doc, I've, I'm a I'm a diabetic. I got all these health problems, and I'm on medication, and I'm on this, and I'm this, and I have an erectile issue." You are always going to have to start from the inside and pumping is going to, you know, help with the tissue. But until all that other stuff gets sorted out, getting an erection hard and stiff is, is, is a pipe dream at that point. So you've got to back up, do the hard work and, 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 and the rest kind of follows in place.